So FSD 14.1 has officially started rolling out. It's the first in the V14 series. And Ashrick is the head of AI at Tesla, and he says there's going to be many follow-up releases with significant improvements in the works. These should ship throughout the rest of the year. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys the release notes as well as some of the initial reactions from some of the testers. We'll hear from AI Driver, Dirty Tesla, as well as Zach. And sorry put the release notes in big text for us, so let's start reading. V14.1 includes added arrival options for you to select where FSD should park, in a parking lot, or on the street, or in a driveway, or in a parking garage, or at the curbside. It includes added handling to pull over or yield for emergency vehicles, added navigation and routing into the vision-based neural network for real-time handling of blocked roads and detours. That one is awesome. It added an additional speed profile to further customize driving style preference, and we'll dive deeper into this later. There's improved handling for static and dynamic gates. An AI driver will show us a real life example of that in this video. There's improved offsetting for road debris, improved handling of several scenarios, including unprotected turns, lane changes, vehicle cut-ins, and school buses and improved FSD's ability to manage system faults and recover smoothly from degraded operation for enhanced reliability. They added automatic narrow field washing to provide rapid and efficient front camera self-cleaning and optimize aerodynamics wash at higher vehicle speed. They added alerting for residue buildup on interior windshield that may impact front camera visibility. And upcoming improvements include overall smoothness and sentience, and parking spot selection and parking quality. So here's the speed profiles. They added a new one called sloth mode, which is even chiller than chill mode. And FSD will now determine the appropriate speed based on a mix of driver profile, speed limit, and surrounding traffic. And the driver profile now has a stronger impact on behavior. The more assertive the profile, the higher the max speed. And the right scroll wheel up and down now adjusts the speed profile setting rather than your precise max speed offset selection in miles per hour and kilometers per hour. And here's what the arrival options will look like in the UI. We talked about this earlier, being able to choose how the car parks. Tesla said, our reasoning model will assess the suitable options for your destination and pick an intuitive default. So in this case, the parking lot would be the default. And here's my favorite update of the whole notes. Now all you have to do is you see this button, start self-driving, is just tap it before you had to press and hold and then the car would sit for one or two seconds before going. Now you just tap it and apparently the car just instantly starts driving. Watch this. So we're in a parking garage right now. Just one tap and it goes. And another thing that's really interesting is Omar noted that there's no auto steer option or traffic aware cruise control. And so Tech AU pointed out, that it looks like Tesla is merging the FSD and the autopilot code to a single stack because this V14 build disables traffic aware cruise control and auto steer. And it says that these options will return in future builds. It says that right here. Oh, but my face is blocking it right here. This is huge. And I think it's huge because people use the five year old autopilot or however old it is. And then they think that FSD will probably perform similarly. So for them to be on the same stack, that's good news for autopilot. And here's FST 14 pulling through a narrow gate as promised. AI driver says V13 could never make it and tried many times. And here were AI driver's first impressions. He says the good is that the destination options are incredible and very well done. Parking has been fast and flawless so far. Zero corrections and right between the lines. Also, it pulls into the driveways of houses very reliably and actually parks itself. Feels like the freaking future. And V14 is always ready to go. If your car is in gear, there's absolutely zero delay from pressing the self-driving button to when it actually takes off. Feels like it's been considering what to do for a lifetime and you finally let it free. It's super fast. And as we just saw, it squeezes gaps that V13 would never go for. And also just generally, it feels like it's never wondering what to do. It's always executing a maneuver and not pausing like V13. The speed profiles feel pretty different now in a good way. Although I'm pretty sure the new sloth mode just lowers the max speed to the detected speed limit, which artificially limits it. Sometimes it feels like it wants to drive faster, even in sloth mode, but can't. And there's a particular wide road with a 25 mile per hour speed limit near me that V13 would speed over 10 miles per hour on very consistently. But V14 did five miles per hour over on standard profile, which is a big improvement. 
and it seems like it tries to stay within the lane lines much better than V13, which is technically the correct and legal thing to do, but can sometimes make it feel slightly more jerky during turning. I had the same feedback in my RoboTaxi rides. Overall a positive though, it's definitely staying further away from curbs and not cutting corners like V13 sometimes would. And U-turns have absolutely never been handled better. I did a bunch for testing and it handled them all flawlessly, even in the dark where the lights didn't light up some of the drivable space. It felt like it remembered what it saw from the headlights in the moments before and just went for it. And I'm not sure if they updated the maps, but several places where the car did the wrong thing on V13, like used the wrong turning lane for incorrect address and navigation, V14 no longer does. I had three spots I was super excited to test and it passed two out of the three. The one that wasn't fixed wasn't a disengagement, it just went around the block and did a U-turn that was not necessary. AI driver says, I feel like I have not even gotten close to stress testing this, which I feel like I have to point out in the good section because man, it's crazy how far we've come. I was thinking about this a lot during the drive as it went through several areas where older versions would struggle with each time. And the car just feels more sentient. As others have described, you can definitely feel V14 considering a lot more when it's driving about its surroundings, which is usually a great thing, but sometimes not, which I will explain below. So it's time for the bad. He had two minor braking events that happened very quickly. It was probably only braking a total of one tenth of a second, but it felt pretty harsh like a quick jab of the brakes before going back to regular driving. Both times it did this, I was messing with the navigation route, but still startled me a bit. I had a moment where it tried to pull over to the side of the road for a moment due to someone approaching us behind with super blue headlights. It never actually pulled over, but signaled and started to go off the road, then immediately changed its mind and continued. It probably thought it was an emergency vehicle. I chose two impossible destinations. The first was behind a fence and it just reversed all the way back out into the road and did several U-turns before arriving at the same spot each time. It was stuck in an infinite loop. The second was a destination pin slightly behind a closed road where it technically could have gone around but didn't and instead stopped at the nearest stop sign and shifted itself into park, which is better than an infinite loop, I suppose. And there's a new message on screen that says increased attention required that pops up whenever you approach a construction zone or railroad crossing and possibly for other stuff too, but I feel like it's actually distracting. It appears suddenly and makes me take my eyes off the road to see what it says, which is probably the opposite of what they want. I think a subtle blue glow like before or maybe a sound would be better. But overall, super impressed and can't wait to actually stress test tomorrow. Seems like Tesla AI absolutely cooked here and it seriously feels like a robotaxi with some of the features they've added. They fixed so many things in my local area, which I'll talk about in my first impressions video. Yeah, make sure you guys are subbed to AI Driver on YouTube. And it also looks like FSD 14 is using the front bumper camera. Dirty Tesla actually covered the camera and while the car does drive, it threw out this error. Autopilot visibility limited. And here is a look at the parking. Zach pulls into the Tesla diner with V14 and backs into a supercharging space perfectly. He didn't have to tap any of the parking spots that he wanted to choose. FSC just pulls into the lot and parks. And he also noted that it navigates parking garages really well. Here's a full clip of it leaving a parking spot, going through the garage and waiting for him to put the ticket in and exiting. He said it almost feels like it can read the signs above to go find the exit with a complex garage here. And here he is leaving the parking garage. FSD goes to the exit and pulls close along the ticket booth and it waits for Zach to insert the ticket and then FSD proceeds. This is wild. And then here Zach approached a construction zone with a worker holding a stop sign and you can see the machine is moving across the lane. And so then as it clears away, the construction guy takes down the sign and then uh, FSD continues on. So Zach did 10 drives in total and here are his thoughts. First of all, wow, zero disengagements or interventions thus far. The confidence and overall human-like driving is next level. The steering inputs are so smooth, braking inputs are earlier and more linear than before. It gives off robotaxi vibes with how it navigates parking lots plus how it drives and how quickly it backs into a parking spot. It's such a nice experience to ride along with it. And hurry mode is awesome. It's quick and more assertive than before, while also being smoother with less unnecessary lane changes. Sloth mode is what you'd expect, exact speed limit and gentle driving. And the icons are cool and easy to change. When you start FSD from park, there's no delay. It starts right away and leaves in a split second. He loves the arrival options, and it perfectly parks at superchargers. 
He said, only thing so far to note is one instance of slight braking when going around a bus blocking a lane. It was probably not even half a second and dropped one to two miles per hour, but I felt it. Super, super minor, and that sounds similar to what AI Driver said. He said, it pulls in and out of my driveway great, and it doesn't hesitate at all, as well as when at chargers. Everything has a quicker response time. The curbside is cool too as it pulls right up against the curb perfectly in a parking spot. This release now means now 100% of your driving can now be done on FSD. From your driveway into a parking garage. Elon was right when he said it would feel sentient and this isn't even 14.2 yet. He also says the Tesla AI team cooked. It's phenomenal. Huge congrats to them for such an epic release. This is a huge update and I can't wait to drive it more. It's now 5 a.m. so I'm going to attempt to get some sleep, but tons more driving and videos coming later today as soon as I can. So shout out to Zach for being up all night. And another thing that's cool on the visualization is now there's this like blue glow around the Tesla. And this is pretty cool. Not only can FSD 14 pull into Dirty Tesla's gravel driveway, which no version has done this before, it can also pull into the garage. It's navigating this narrow gap as we saw before. Combine that with the new parking expertise and you get parking in the garage. So those are some of the first impressions on V14. I've yet to get it on my car, which is why I'm on X, just reacting to everybody else's reactions. But I'm definitely excited to get it and I'm glad that I've had V13 now for a few months since I got my car so I can actually have something to compare V14 to. But yeah, mostly positive from the early reporters and that's all for today. I'll see you guys later.